Today we're going to talk about lasagna gardening beds. We'll look at the progress of the one we're building and also I'm going to explain why I ditched the keyhole bed idea in favor of lasagna and is there really a difference anyway? So stay tuned for that. Oh, I forgot to tell you the date. Today is Friday, June 29, 2018. Feels like it's already 90 degrees, but it's humid, so it may not be quite 90 yet. But, as you can see, the melon is turning brown. Whoa, that might be overripe. <laughs> so, Benjamin is going to stick his nose down by the melon and make sure that it is indeed ripe. Go ahead. Sniff that melon and tell us if it's nice and sweet. Mm, yeah, it smells so good. Are you going to want some of that? Yeah. How about we share it? You want some of that for lunch before we go swimming? Maybe? Yeah, probably. And then maybe I'll have some of it for my afternoon smoothie. Okay, go ahead and see. Can you twist it off or is that stem too thick? That's an awfully thick stem. Or do we need to get a scissors and cut it? I'm going to go get the machete. <laughs> this is going to work. This is good. This is kind of overkill. Uh, no. <laughs> Let's see how it works. I don't want to cut anything. <laughs> there we go. It's sliced right here. So I've cut the melon open for Benjamin and check it out. See how it's darker there? It's all soft to very soft. Means it's overripe. We could have harvested this two, maybe even three days ago. But, you know, better overripe melon than underripe. Because <laughs> underripe melons kind of taste like flavorless cucumber. Okay, Benjamin, how does our Charente melon taste? Very good. <laughs> sweet. Super sweet, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is super sweet. Another little job I've got today is I've got a bunch of these lettuce seeds that I sowed. Not today. It hasn't been a week yet. Maybe four or five days ago. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. They've germinated, so I need to get them transferred into little net cups like that. And so therefore, in order to have space for those new ones, I need to get these moved up here so I've got to get I've got to find the most bolted like this one the ones that are really bolting and um, get them out so I have room for new things new plants all right so I got that accomplished at least I transferred the ones on the, the cups that were on the saucer they are now sitting inside Half, ga half gallon vinegar containers of nutrient solution. So this way I'm not going to hardly ever have to water. Maybe not ever during the life of the plant. Maybe once. I don't know. We'll see. Because I do cut and come again. They live a little bit longer than just, you know, letting them get big and go to harvest. But I am no longer going to have, let's see, covered up all my problems here with it. this point. See that? See that gross brunt? That's a leaf. It has flopped over from the net cup and it's rotting in the nutrient solution. So, for number one, I'm not going to have any more rotting leaves. Look how high up this is. And there's still plenty of space for it to grow between there and where the lights are. So, no more flopping over and rotting leaves. And I'm not going to hardly ever have to worry about watering. Just turn on, you know, turn on the lights every day, turn them off when I'm supposed to, and Oh, and then we'll have a harvest that looks like this without any rotting leaves. All right, I'm going to wrap today's vlog up with um, talking about why we ditched the keyhole bed in favor of lasagna beds. But um, first, an update on the SIP bed. I want to tell this. I, I've got to share this with you. The other day when I was top watering this, the thought came into my mind. Could it have a leak? Could the plastic at the bottom? It's pond liner. Now it's pond liner and it's thick, but it's still plastic. Could the reason that the water is disappearing so fast out of here 
not be the plants at all, but because it has a leak. <laughs> I didn't say anything to Jerry, but guess what? Earlier today, he said to me, Emily, you know, I'm wondering if the SIP bed might have a leak. <sighs> so he's thinking about taking it apart this fall after, you know, we're, we're all done with these tomatoes and cucumber. <laughs> I'll update you. All right, now on with the program. <laughs> Originally, a few months back, I did a video about a new vision for our garden, and I was talking about doing keyhole beds. And I, d I did a subsequent video where I was showing you I was taking down this keyhole bed that we had started. And first of all, it's because I did it wrong with the wrong material. I did it lazy. We ended up with a bunch of mice nesting in it. And don't, don't, don't we all want a whole bunch of mice running around our garden? Because we had used, um, you know, weeds that weren't decaying was the main problem, the thick, woody stuff. It was like straw. It was a perfect place for mice to nest. And you know how quickly, if you know rodents, how quickly one mouse, two, how quickly two mice can turn into a hundred mice. So that wasn't a good thing anyway. Um, the other thing about keyhole beds, well, first of all, this is a square garden. Our, my garden is in the shape of a square. <laughs> and um, so even though keyhole beds are supposed to be more efficient as far as, you know, the spacing of things that you plant inside it, uh, a bunch of round beds inside a square garden isn't the most efficient thing to do. So that's another thing. Um, I also had it way too high. I didn't need it three feet high. <laughs> Obviously, the the 16 inches that the SIP beds are, are, are quite comfortable for gardening in. But the keyhole beds, remember, is a, um, basically a circle with a little keyhole that you can walk in so you can access both sides in the middle. And in the very middle, you have a place where you uh, pour in your gray water and you've got your, um, you put in your compost and that's how it gets watered and fertilized. Well, I've been thinking about it and you know, now, now the other thing, keyhole beds and lasagna beds are very, they're almost the same. Except lasagna beds, lasagna garden beds can be any shape they want to be. Okay? So we're making ours rectangles. Keyhole beds are specifically circles. They're both built with um, layering organic material that decay over time. A lasagna bed, you can either add uh, soil at the top to finish it off if you want to. But a lot of people don't. They just let the material decay and then plant in that compost. Keyhole beds tell you to layer up to a certain level and then a foot, go up a foot, and then you have the soil going from the middle, sloping down all around the, the thing in the middle where you put your water and compost. And if I look like I'm sweating, it's because it's only 100 degrees out here. Yeah, probably like 60% humidity. <laughs> so, excuse my little beads forming. But I thought about it, and, and I thought about it. And presumably, the keyhole bed would save you watering. But with the experience I have planting in containers, and you're... It's a key, so keyhole gardening is sort of top watering, sort of, not exactly, but it wouldn't be that much less water just to have lasagna gardens. In fact, I read a book on gardening in the southwest. The author lives in the Austin, Texas area, and in, in her book, she talks about one year, she talks about different kinds of raised beds you can build. Um, she talks about uh, she has one area that has lasagna beds, and one year just everything was dying. It was so dry and she was tired of using all the water. You know, her water bill was probably out of this world. She quit watering. The things in the lasagna garden bed survived and kept producing. <laughs> that tells you something, huh? So I don't think that a keyhole bed really trumps a lasagna garden bed. You know, as long as you've got that, you know, the right uh, mix of materials. You need to have a mix, uh, kind of like an equal mix of, they say, one inch green to three inch brown, but kind of that mix, nitrogen high, high in nitrogen, high in carbon, and then you'll have that decaying process going on, which will keep the soil underneath moist. 
So that's why we ditched the keyhole bed idea. It was more complicated really than I needed to be. So I wanted to show you our first, the beginning of our first lasagna bed, the progress we've made. Um, yes, we're building sides with uh, treated lumber. No, treated lumber no longer has that nasty chemical that everybody's so afraid of. The treated lumber used to have, they don't put it in treated lumber anymore, all right? Besides, <laughs> we're lining ours because treated, you know, the treated lumber isn't really, it's not designed to last forever if it's wet all the time, right? So this is a poly tarp, just lining it with a nice quality poly tarp all around the sides. The bottom is open, so the bottom is, um, we've got hardware cloth all on the bottom to keep the moles out, and then we've got our, a couple of layers of cardboard on top of that. And we're doing a yuga culture mixed in with lasagna. So our, our first layer, our, actually our second layer, is wood, see? So that's how we've got that going, and that's going to be even better for helping the soil to stay moist. It, it should last for several years, it should help uh, seriously reduce watering. Oh, speaking of watering, that's another thing that the tarp will do. The tarp will help to hold in water better than just the wood by itself. So, just like I said, in the video I made about the new vision for my garden. This may take a while. It may. We're we're going to have four more beds, ten by three beds in this area. I'm going to put a couple of smaller ones, like eight by three or something, over there by the grape trellis. That will be specifically for growing carrots. Um, so it may take a couple of years before we've got all of these beds put together all the material gathered and everything composted well enough to plant in. But as, like I said in that video, I'm willing to take the time, especially having found out that SIP beds aren't all they're chalked up to be. <laughs> they have, on my, um, my video of pros and cons, I have a lot more pros and cons, but I think it's, that list is starting to even out now. Well, there you go. I hope you learned something about lasagna gardening and um, keyhole beds, whatever, and enjoyed a couple of the other things we did on Homestead today. Feel free to share this video with your online networks. In fact, I ask you to share it with your online networks if you've got people who are interested in homesteading, um, even just plain old gardening. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't so that you can get lots more gardening. Follow my gardening journey see the mistakes I made, plus learn some things along the way, and get lots of simple and sustainable living tips. Thanks a lot for watching. I think I said that anyway. <laughs> I'll see you for the next video in the meantime. Take care, and stay cool, man. It's hot this summer.